Hi everybody, welcome to the Daily Racing Forum Formulator Race of the Day for Saturday, January the 7th. I'm Dan Illman, Matt Bernier joins me via Skype for the race of the day, which is the grade three sham race number seven at one mile, 10 Kentucky Derby points to the winner. It's a hundred grander in a grade three. Let's take a look at the field for the sham. We've got a field of seven. They are all Keeneland graduates, as you can see. And I want to remind everybody, head on over to the race of the day event page on drf.com. Download those free formulator pass performances and follow along with us. Down towards the rail, Matt, it appears that Bob Baffert might have another good three-year-old on his hands, the number one American anthem. Took a lot of money in his career debut at Del Mar. Wasn't the most visually fantastic effort from a Baffert horse we've ever seen. I'm reluctantly going to kind of give the nod to him, but it's more because I don't trust anyone else in this field, and Baffert I trust. And you just look at it from a figure standpoint, if he improves at all, He's going to be very, very difficult to beat. I didn't love how late he was to change leads, but I'm going to just chalk it up to a baby being a baby. Maybe second time out, he can improve. Yeah, he was a little bit green in that race, wasn't he? Not usually representative of the typical Baffert first-time starter. He chased the pace wide. He looked like he was in deep, deep water in the stretch. And as you mentioned, very, very late to change leads, but he gutted it out, and he was able to do so over three next now winners. One of those horses came back to graduate with a 92 buyer speed figure. Plus, it's Baffert, so we must have a positive formulator fact. Let's throw that up there right now for the number one American anthem. Over the past five years, with debut winners on dirt stretching out in the second start, he's 7 for 11 with a $2.18 return on investment. American anthem by Bodie Meister stretches out, draws a cozy inside post position. The number two is Term of Art. Term of Art won the off the turf. Grade three Cecil B. DeMille on November the 27th. And Matt, that at least shows this horse can handle off going which is a real possibility at Santa Anita on Saturday. Boy, the people that are in Arcadia have got to be a little bit ticked off with Mother Nature now because it just seems like day after day thus far with this meeting. A chance of rain or rain actually does show up. Term of art, I don't know about you, I watch him run. There's, I think there's something here, but I don't think he's ever going to be a brilliant horse. I feel like he's just kind of a stayer. You look at Joe Talamo, he's ridden the hair off this horse in all five of his lifetime starts or six at this point coming up to it. I don't know. I mean, I think he's an, an interesting horse going forward. I just wonder if he's going to need more distance than a mile and maybe softer company. And he might need a little bit of pace as well. As you mentioned, he doesn't have a lot of early speed. He likes to grind it out. That Cecil B. DeMille was running slow time, but at least the runner-up vending machine, a turf bred horse, when he switched to that surface for the first time, he was able to win the Eddie Logan after finishing second in the Cecil B. DeMille, the Eddie Logan with an 80 buyer speed figure. The number three is Bird is the Word. He's one of my favorite maidens in Southern California. He's still a maiden. He couldn't get it done last time out on the turf, back to dirt. Uh, this is a very ambitious spot to say the least. Yeah, Ambitious is putting it kindly. I will say that most recent turf effort, I thought it was good considering he was up on the engine the whole way and he couldn't quite get it done. But uh, how about we break through and get a maiden victory before we take on the Great Stakes competition? Number four, Colonel Sampson will be making his first start on dirt in Saturday's Sham Stakes. The source has won on turf. He won on synthetic most recently. That was the Gold Rush Stakes at Golden Gate Fields. Now he's going to get Lasix for the first time for trainer Owen Hardy. The horse that ran third in the Gold Rush came back to beat one Expos with a 74 buyer speed figure. Surface the big question. Yeah, you never know with these horses until they actually do try the dirt, particularly when we've gone out thus far and only run on turf and synthetic. Uh, you and I were on DRF Live, I believe, the day that he ran up at Golden Gate, and okay, maybe the ride was a little bit suspect, and he almost cost this horse the victory, but at the end of the day, it looked like he was loaded, ready to fire, and he had to kind of gut it out a little bit, and I understand the Lake Six go on now. Maybe it was for a reason. Maybe the horse bled, or maybe they're looking at it saying, he needs a little bit of a jump if he's going to run with the big boys. Owen Hardy, first time late six past five years, is four for 74. Not a positive move there. He's an interesting horse, I think. He may be okay going forward. I just don't know if he can run on the dirt. The most accomplished horse in this race is the number five, Gormley. Gate to wire winner of the front runner, two starts back. Now that front runner was a weird race because the expected speed of the race, all kinds of issues at the start, started the race without the rider, and lo and behold, Gormley ends up on a fairly easy lead. You liked him that day at 10 to one, he looked strong in the stretch, and in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, he was three, four wide throughout in a tracking position. I'm not sure he's fast enough to make the lead here, but he should be close, and he should give a good performance. 
I don't want to hold the Breeders' Cup juvenile against him. I understand he didn't really pick his feet up at all, but that was really his first time coming off the pace against much, much better company than he's going to be facing here today. Um, look, maybe he does need the lead. We'll find out in time. I said it after that front runner. You watch the way that he runs, and you look at his pedigree. Maybe I'm crazy for saying this because he's a grade one winner on dirt. I think ultimately he's going to be a turf horse. I think he'll probably end up being able to use that speed early on. For the here and now, if he runs the front runner, he's got a big, big chance, and he's obviously the horse to beat. If he runs the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, uh, he's he's far from a, a slam dunk. That's an interesting angle, thinking about turf down the road. His dam was strictly a turf force. The six is big hit, stretching out once again. He tried to stretch out in his second lifetime start. He was beaten by Term of Art. They cut him back at Del Mar, and he was able to win the faster division of two six-and-a-half furlong maiden special weights for two-year-olds. This horse was able to get to the lead. He was very late to change leads, but he was much the best over little Juanito, who finished third and came back and gave American Anthem fits. Big hit's going to be out on the lead or close to it. I would imagine they've got to send him right from gate break. I think Gonzalez tries to clear to the front. You look, D'Amato's had success going sprint to route in the past with these uh, with these kind maiden winner last out. Um, look, the run two back, I understand he stopped like he was hit over the head. He went really, really fast early on the clear off. He went 22 and change. I'm not going to hold that one against him. I don't like how late he was to change leads most recently, though, when he broke his maiden. If anyone's going to wire the field, I think it's going to be this horse. I just am a little bit leery at this stage in the game about how good he actually is. Now we have a formulator fact for the number six big hits trainer, Phil D'Amato. Over the past two years with three-year-olds on dirt, last out maiden winner, eight for 22, 36%, a $2.74 return on investment. Blabamir the seven completes the field. This horse took blinkers off at Los Salamitos, was able to score at eight to one in pace pressing fashion, and has now got to stretch all the way out to a mile. Los Alamitos, as we've talked about ad nauseum, is a very quirky racetrack. I liked what he did at Los Al that day, but boy, you made mention going from five and a half to a mile against much, much better company. Uh, the outside post, it'll be interesting to see what Gutierrez does because you know that the six up drawn just to his inside is planning on going. I mean, if these two hook up early on, they could set a sizzling pace. You know Gormley's not going to be far off of it. Maybe it sets up for a horse like Term of Art, but uh, at this stage in the game, both of the O'Neills, I'll sit back and wait and see. Yeah, I think that Blabamir is going to be close, perhaps in closest attendance to Big Head, allowing Gormley and maybe the Baffert runner, American Anthem, to sort of draft in behind in the second flight. One of the horses that Blabamir beat at Los Sal, the horse that ran seventh, he at least came back to run third in a maiden and improved the buyer speed figure to a 77. But it's picks time. Where are you going in the sham? I have to be honest. I know it's not an interesting pick. I'm going with American Anthem for Baffert. And I said at the top, it's not because I love this horse. It's just it's kind of in Baffert I trust. It's going to be interesting to see. He needs to be more professional if he's going to win here and if he's going to continue on. But if you just look at it from a figure standpoint, he's already run arguably fast enough to win this race as is. And that was in his lone lifetime start. The pedigree is there for him. I'm going to go with American Anthem. I'm going to go with American Anthem as well. I think he might trip out under Mike Smith uh, for Bob Baffert, obviously. And again, maybe a nice in-out trip on the second flight. I'm going to try to beat Gormley in here. Maybe he'll run down big hit American Anthem. So my number will be 1-6 in the grade 3 sham stakes. And if you happen to be playing the Saturday sham card from home, here's the deal from DRF Bets. $100 worth of free bets, $100 sign-up bonus, $25 additional free bet. Free money is good. Head on over to drfbets.com slash free bet for all of the details. Approximate post time for the sham. Race number seven is at 3.30 Pacific. We'll be on DRF Live, live.drf.com beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern with updated analysis of the sham. Best of luck.